Sally Vancura, and welcome to In the American Kitchen, a show where New Lenox Cooks shows us their recipes and the story behind them. And for this show, we have a cook that has already showed us some of her recipes, someone we all know. She has her own food column and the New Lenox Patriot, Liz Schwenke. Liz, thank Hi. you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks for asking me. Okay, well, we're going to make something, and again, I know nothing about Hungarian food. Yeah, you know, I'm Hungarian as far as the eye can see. My grandparents were actually born here, but they went as young children back to Hungary and sort of grew up there and then came back to the United States as young adults. And so this is a dish that I've been making pretty much my entire life. Okay, and the dish we're going to be making it's is? It's called chicken paprikash. Uh, a lot of people here probably know it as a variation of your chicken and dumplings. Oh, okay. Our dumplings are a little bit smaller. Uh, they're not the heavy sort of biscuity dumplings. They're more like spatzels. Okay. Okay, have you shared this recipe in your column? I before? have not. Okay, so, so this is see a it right here, exactly. Good, let's get started. All righty. Thanks. Now we're going to prepare the chicken right. first for your dish. And you know, most people think it's complicated, but it's actually not. It's a couple of steps. So grandma used to use lard, but you know, people are more health conscious. But I still am using a vegetable shortening, but you can use canola oil or saffron oil or even vegetable oil and it okay. would be fine. Put just about enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Now I did notice this pot too. Right, this is a enamelized cast iron pot and everybody who claims they're a cook should own one. You can get, this is actually a Martha Stewart version that I got at Kmart about 15 years ago. It was about $70 then. Um, it, it'll last forever. I mean, my daughter will probably have this pot when I'm gone, but uh, someone for one of my birthdays bought me a Le, Le Cousette pot from Williams-Sonoma, which was an $800 pot. And it's about, you know, it's about four times this size, but it's really good if you're cooking for a large crowd. $800 pot, yeah. very good. Okay. But the weight on this. It's, it's nice and heavy. We're going to add some chopped onion. Okay. You can hear that nice good sound. sizzle. And I'm going to season those with just a little bit of salt. Okay. Regular salt? I use or? kosher salt. I think ta they call table salt, table salt for a reason. It's what you should put on the table, but I like to use kosher for cooking. And some fresh pepper. And then this is the paprika. You can see this is actually made in Hungary. Okay. And in a village called Sedgged. And they're known for their production of, of um, paprika. And you can get either a smoked, a spicy, uh, a hot, or this is the mild sweet version, which is what I like to use for this okay. dish. Okay. But if you like things a little spicier, you can certainly, you know, spice it up a little bit. Just a little bit on the onions, about maybe a half a, te half a teaspoon. Oh, this is starting to smell good already. Mm -hmm. And while those are browning up, we're going to season our chicken. I've got a combination here of chicken thighs and chicken breasts. We like okay. to use some white and some dark and always chicken on the bone. It gives it a much better flavor. So I'm just going to season these up again with some salt. A little bit of that great fresh ground pepper. Good seasoning of paprika on each one. Oh, there's a lot on there. Yeah, huh? they'll, okay. they'll it'll all blend together. So if you okay. you know you get too much on one, it's not a, it's not a big deal. And then we're going to add the chicken pieces. I'm going to add it skin side down, just to get some of that nice flavor. You can smell it already, can't you? Uh huh. And you really don't have to worry about anything really burning in this pot. Um, it, it keeps a nice seasoning, just like a cast iron cast iron skillet. So it's really filled in it's there. It's really filled in there. And we're just going to let this brown up a little bit and uh, give it a flip and continue browning. Okay, let's get this browning. Alrighty. Okay, now it's pretty much getting there pretty brown. Is this how you want it to look? Yeah, it's not going to be cooked all the way through, but it, the paprika gives it sort of a nice crust. So now typically what we do is a lot of people will use chicken stock, but chicken stock is sort of pricey. So a shortcut I've taken is you're going to cover the chicken with water, okay. just plain old tap water. And you want to make sure that it's pretty much covered. And then 
a much less expensive route is to add a chicken bouillon cube. It gives it the same effect, and it's it's about a third of the price. So I just break it up in there, just like that. Okay. And we're going to put a lid on it, and it's going to cook for about an hour. Okay. Let's see what we get. Okay, it's been an hour now, Liz, so what are we doing now? We're actually going to make the part of the dish that helps to thicken the broth that the chicken's cooking in. That okay. way um, we incorporate our sour cream, which is, you know, in practically every Hungarian dish. So what I've got here is about a third cup of flour, just all-purpose flour. And then okay. I'm going to put in about two-thirds cup of sour cream. This is reduced fat. Normally I use, you know, the full full-fledged sour cream, but I happen to grab this at the store, so we'll go with this. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Okay. And then one more. That's about good. And then Hungarians always add a little extra dollop for good luck, so we'll just <laughs> I thought they add just that, a wine that, in the cooking. Add that for grandma right there. <laughs> and what I've done is I've taken uh, about two ladles full of stock off of the chicken, okay. and I just put it in this cup, and we're just going to whisk that in. And this will actually thicken it, huh? It will. The flour blends with the sour cream, and then the, the stock helps break down the flour so you don't have, have any lumps, actually, and it turns out to be very smooth. So we're going to whisk this, and when this is nice and smooth, we'll just take the pieces of chicken directly out of the pot, and we'll whisk this in, and it'll incorporate in with the stock that's in there, and then we'll put the chicken back in and cook it a little 15, 20 minutes longer for to get all the flavor of the, the uh, sour cream. So it's just 15 minutes yep. after this, and I'll thicken up. And, and we'll, we'll do that now, so that should be good to go. Okay, let's get that going. All right. Okay. Now, while the chicken is heating mm -hmm. up right now, we're going to make dumplings. Okay, so the chicken's back there, and it's getting all nice and thick, and the chicken's taking on those juices, so now it's the time for the, the best part, which is the dumplings. Uh, dumplings, you just don't have to use them in just this recipe. They're great in soups, stews, so they're, they're very versatile. They're like our version of the potato. Okay. So what I have here are two and a half cups of just all-purpose flour. I'm going to just add about a tablespoon of salt. Crack three eggs. Room temperature eggs are always the best. And about a half a cup of, of good cold water. Sometimes I add a little bit more. It uh, helps the dumplings loosen up. Another thing you can also do is you can, um, if you want to make like a rich beef vegetable soup, you can take the same dumpling mixture. And I know a lot of people don't like it, but you can chop up a couple chicken livers right in here and some grated onion and some parsley. And it makes a really nice dumpling for soup. Oh, that's a good idea. Give it some extra mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. I like that. But this is a good technique to use for your dumplings. You just fold this all in. You don't want to work it too much because you don't want the flour to get too heavy and too dense. Okay. And just about when it's, you can use your hand, fingers for this as well, but it, it does get to be a little bit messy. We'll do it nice like this for your camera. There you go. Grandma's looking down right now saying, that's not the way you do it. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to showing us the next part here. Okay, I'm going to let this rest for just a minute. And okay. again, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as everything's incorporated, most, mostly the eggs. All right, so they're still going to look a little floury, and that's fine. Okay, so we'll let this rest. And this is a dumpling maker. It was my grandma's dumpling maker, and I've been hard-pressed even online to find one. Um, she used to do it just by taking a teaspoon and, and just flicking it into the pot, which you can still do, but uh, Grandpa bought her this one Christmas, and she used it for a while, I think, just to appease them, and went back to the old teaspoon method, and this was passed on to me. So I've used it. When something happens to it, I don't know what I'll do, but um, 
You can get a more modern version. It's, it's sort of like a mandolin and it's long and it has a tube that you can put your dough in and then slide it back and forth and it'll, it'll drop down through the holes. But I'm gonna ask you to give this one, I'm gonna give this one more, just a quick turn. Okay, and you have just regular boiling water. Just regular water boiling here. water. I'm going to put just a little bit of salt okay. in it now. And this is where it's nice to have some help in the kitchen because one person can hold the dumpling maker and the other person can pour the batter in. Oh, I could hold. So I'm going to give you your first <laughs> dumpling lesson right on TV. This is great. Okay. Pour almost all of that in. You can just rotate just, it. Just keep pretty fast. Oh, go fast? Yeah. Okay, we could go fast. And you'll see they're starting to, jump, to drop down into the water. Oh, that is cool. That is amazing. So they're done when they come floating to the top? They are. They usually take two or three minutes. Okay, because I see some sneaking up there. So we'll just finish this off and then add it to the chicken. Okay, your dumplings are already. They are. They, you can always tell when they float to the top. Okay. And uh, for the last, to get to get the final product out of the bowl, I did do a few by hand. So you'll, you know, by teaspoon. So you'll see a couple that look rather large. But um, that'll be mine for the moment. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ones the kids always go for. Give me the big ones, mom. Okay. Now Hungarian. Um, Dumplings are a little different than any. They are. They're more like the German spätzle, and I think that's where you know all the ethnic, com you know, everybody combined all the countries, and you have some traditions from some countries, you know, in all the countries. And I think sour cream, you know, dumplings or spätzles is one of those universal ingredients that is incorporated in a lot of uh, European cooking. So. Okay. 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 So now, now I'm just gonna turn right. this around. What I've done is I've, my mom and my grandmother would put some um, dumplings on a plate and pour it, ladle some sauce over it and then clunk a big piece of chicken down on your plate. But for me, when you're cooking for your family or a party or a group of friends, you don't want people messing with all the bones. So, you know, in the back of the kitchen while everybody's having a good time, I just uh, take the meat right off the bones of the chicken and that way people aren't fussing. Okay. And this is uh, this is sort of what you come out with, as well as the skin. Get the skin all out. And then the cook gets to chew on those bones. Yeah, too, and that's right? the best part. <laughs> so I'm gonna now put this back into the pot. Let's see if I can do this without making too much of a mess. I think I'm gonna use my hands. The best tools God gave you in the kitchen are your hands, right? You got it. Clean hands. Okay, that's about good. And then, if you'd be so kind to take that, I'm just okay. going to add the dumplings. We'll slide this over here. Now, this isn't a dish that I like to make and eat right the same day. To me, um, it's better if, if it sits in the broth and, and picks up all those great juices. So this would be a meal that you could make, say, the chicken ahead of time and even take it off the bone and put it in the sauce and then maybe make your dumplings that same day, a sort of a last minute thing before your company gets there or your family sits down. And the dumplings will also help thicken it up because it will absorb some of the juices, so this will be just a little bit thicker sauce by the time you're ready to eat it. Well, this smells wonderful again and it Thank looks you. great too. But you were saying something earlier about how inexpensive a dish this, this is. Uh, the chicken for this recipe was about a dollar twenty-three. I think I paid for it. And then if you think about another maybe dollar, dollar and a quarter for the couple of eggs and the flour, you can really feed a family of four on this dish for about three or four dollars. So Pure you peasant dish, huh? Pure peasant. Nice crusty bread and a little bit of green beans with bacon like we always do. And um, good to go. Is that your side dish of the... That's my side dish. Okay. Side dish of choice, yes. Okay, great. Okay, then I guess I want to start tasting this. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Okay, Liz, we're all set here. I guess I made you a nice little plate here for you to taste. What I'd like to do is take a little parsley and just... A nice little plate, huh? A nice little plate <laughs> and finish it off with a couple 
little pieces of parsley, and then just a little bit of paprika for color. So enjoy. I brought I brought along my favorite side dish, which is the green beans oh, with bacon. I whipped that? that up for See, you. Too. And this is why I love this show so much. I always get to taste. <laughs> That is excellent. Thank you. That is excellent. Grandma what would be proud. What a nice dish. We usually have this um, in the fall and winter around the holidays. It's always one of the staples on the holiday table. Okay. But before I leave, it's always sort of a Hungarian tradition that if you're invited to someone's home or invited somewhere that you take a gift. Oh. So, so I, I wanted to bring you your, your own in the American Kitchen apron that you can wear on all your shows. Oh my gosh. Is that wonderful? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for sweet. having me. Well, that's going right on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. And this was a wonderful dish. We haven't done Hungarian. This is all new to me, too, so I appreciate it. One thing I did like is your... This is my grandmother's Hungarian cookbook from her Hungarian church. And what I love about it is it's got all her little notes. And even the recipe that we made today, she made some changes on it to what she thought would make it better. So it's a very special book to me. So well, thanks again for having me thank and you for, for letting me bring grandma's recipes to, uh, to television. Well, thank you, Liz. <laughs> thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. And this was a wonderful dish. Thank you so much. Wonderful present. Glad you liked it. And everybody, thank you very much for joining us at In the American Kitchen. If you'd like to share your recipe or your stories with us, just shoot us an email and let us know. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>